and good day and welcome to my video on using sketched blocks within the sketch environment within SOLIDWORKS. Now what I'm going to start here is I'm going to go to my tools drop down and I'm going to go into blocks and I'm going to pick make and you can see that the panel here changes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the objects that I want to include. Now in this case it's a rectangle and a circle that have dimension and constrained but it could be unconstrained geometry because the act of blocking it is going to, in a sense, group it, block it together, and make it a single entity. Now my insertion point here, I'm just going to expand this. I can see where my current uh, insertion point is. So I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag this and move it to my desired location. Now the insertion point becomes the point where your cursor is going to snap if you happen to insert more instances of this particular block. So I'm going to click the check mark here and notice that that block's been created. Now if I just click on it once here, what I can do is I can come in here and I'm going to rename this to base. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to rename that to, to base. Also notice the toolbar that appears now. So I created a block. The block is now present. So now what I can do is I can actually edit blocks from here. I can make new blocks. Um, I can insert blocks. So that's now in one, um, available to me now in the in the browser there or sorry in the over here on the on the side of the uh, UI. Now notice now that this behaves as one entity. So now what I can do is I can reposition this and notice how it groups as one entity. And I'm actually going to snap it to the to the origin there to zero so that it's it's fixed in place because that's where I want the first one to be. Okay well now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a circle and let's actually dimension this circle Let's add another circle out here in space. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these and let's actually make them equal in size. So let's take both of these and let's make them equal in size. I'm also going to start and draw a line and I'm going to snap a line into, into place there. So that's, that's going to control the direction of it. And you can see it automatically snapped it as horizontal. Okay, well now I've got the, the objects created. Let's go through the process again. So I'm going to make a block and it and again I'm just going to do a window select and select these entities. So you can see the line and, and the two arcs. And in this case I want my insertion point actually to be there. So I'm going to use that as my insertion point and I'm going to click the check mark and now we can see I've got that entity in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to snap it onto this one and now notice that I'm starting to um, lay out my mechanism that I want to be able to, to test here and control. And this is definitely one of the benefits of, of doing this. So typically there's there's kind of two reasons why you want to look at sketch blocks. One is for the fact of grouping it to, to allow you to move these things more easily, you know, manipulate them, especially say you've in, imported geometry, let's say from AutoCAD, um, so you, you've got this geometry that you necessarily don't want to have to go through and, and constrain and, and, and deal with, but you still want to use it so you can just group it so it, it behaves as, as one entity. The second reason, as you can see here, is we can do kind of kinematic kind of testing, right? So why commit to all the form when all you want to do is just test the function? So I'm going to come here and I'm going to come over here to insert block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another base and I'm going to insert the, the base over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, this other block here, this block four. Um, block two is from, um, I was working on this, this drawing before, so, or this, sorry, this part before. So that's where that, that other block comes from. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert two of these. So now you can see that um, I've inserted those in there. So now what I can do is with a combination of you know dragging um, or using constraints is I can actually start snapping these in, into place. So you can see I've, I've got this positioned where I want. Let's take this one here and I'm going to snap it there because I want this to go like that. So you can see now that I'm, I'm starting to get my, my mechanism here. Well I'm going to pick this bottom line here because what I really want here is I want this line to be horizontal. So notice how I was able to, to apply a constraint to that line within that block. To, to constrain the entire block. So now you can see I'm able to, to test out this, this mechanism. So now I've got this, I've tested my function, it's, it's looking pretty good, but let's, let's apply a dimension as well. So let's apply a dimension between there and there, because what I wanna see is I wanna see what this looks like at 15 degrees. And let's take this and let's see what happens if this goes to 12 degrees. So notice how I'm able to use dimensions and actually change that. Okay, well, well, now that I've done that, let's go back and let's actually make a change here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this block here, this block four, and I'm going to go to my edit here. 
and it opens this up so basically puts me in there so now I'm manipulating those objects and I'm going to add a dimension because what I want to do is I want to mention this because maybe this isn't quite the right size let's go eight and a half so you can see I was able to change that and I'd also like to add another circle here just so we can kind of see what this is actually going to look like so we're going to add our, our two circles in here and now that this is done I'm going to click the green check mark to accept that and what we're going to see is that these blocks update. So let's actually do a let's do a rebuild on that. So I thought the rebuild icon was in there, but it's it's only up there. So you can see that by updating that, you can see that the blocks have updated. So all instances have the block have updated with that. So that's kind of the the advantages and and the the um, the reasons why you're going to want to look at using sketch blocks so that again you can test this function um, before you commit to the form I, it, it is sketch geometry so I could actually take it now and extrude it and work with it but I was able to test out the function make sure it was going to work without committing a lot of time a lot of effort now maybe one of these blocks I'd like to actually use in a different different drawing sorry different part so I'm going to take the base here and what I can do is notice that I can actually save this block out. So now what I can do is save this out as a SOLIDWORKS block and actually make it available to me in other, um, as I said, other, other models. So I'd be able to take this base here and I'd actually be able to use that block um, in other, other drawing, other models. I can also come in here and I can actually insert other blocks. So you do have the ability to insert blocks and you can actually browse and select from other locations. You could actually build yourself like a, a block library um, and then insert those as you need them. So maybe you've got standard cylinders, st standard rods, standard linkages. You could just insert them as you need them. So there's a little bit about using blocks within the SOLIDWORKS sketch environment.